What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, May 15th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and anything else health related that could be a threat to you and even we touch on climate topics sometimes as well so if you want to stay informed with what's going on there's a lot of things there's always something going on in the world of viruses and climate subscribe to my channel down below and of course if you want to help keep other people safe by all means share this with anyone you know and hit that thumbs up button the more people that hit that thumbs up button the more youtube pushes this content out throughout the algorithm Got anything to say? Leave a comment down below. Today we're going to take a look at several news stories, basically stuff from Twitter, one which is a study, and then we are going to take a look at some of the uh, daily data that we look at. One weekly state came in today, that's Colorado. We'll get to that at the end of today's update. New York, New Jersey, and some EMS numbers, more Walgreens data, and of course we will take a look at a couple wastewater sites. Alrighty, our first thing that we have to show you today, this comes from Twitter. This was tweeted out by Gregory Travis, and I think this is really interesting to look at. It says, this week's flu versus COVID numbers. So, the total number of influenza deaths in 2024 to date is 6,771. The total number of COVID deaths in 2024 to death to date from his numbers. I don't know if he's using official CDC count, if it's the same as BNO. I think it's probably a CDC count. The point I'm trying to make here is it's 22,390. Yeah, that's clearly a lot more than the 6,771 flu deaths in the United States. So again, it bears saying that COVID is more severe than the flu. It's still causing, to this day, more deaths than flu is causing in the United States. For the time being, we are all keeping our eyes on influenza A and H5N1, but right now, COVID leads the way when it comes to viruses in the United States. All right, moving on to this. Hospital COVID patients, 35% more likely to die than flu patients last winter, study suggests. Well, you just saw right here, clearly, there were 6,771 flu deaths so far this year versus 22,390 COVID deaths. That clearly is the case, and that will likely be the case again this year. Well, you know, this is going off of last year's numbers here. I just showed you this year's numbers. Is there anything else that I need to say? COVID is more deadlier than the traditional flu. All right, moving on to this. This was something I tweeted yesterday, and we're not going to read every single one, but I did not one, not two, not three, not four, but five tweets from uh, various different baseball teams in the United States. Not one of them mentioned the word COVID, but there are illnesses starting to crop up among players in the MLB. And someone alerted me that it was also happening in the hockey, National Hockey League as well. I was noticing that earlier on, but hockey season, did the championship happen yet? I don't think it did, but it's coming to it near an end. Baseball season, well, heck, we're only in May. Baseball goes all the way through October. The World Series will not be until October. And already we have people getting sick. So uh, this is not good. Could any of these be COVID? Well, some of them do say viral infection, but they don't mention the word COVID. And that's for contract reasons or whatever the case be. They just can't say the word COVID anymore. So just know there is illnesses starting to go around in the Major League Baseball. Haven't seen any yet in my team, which is the Phillies. Fingers crossed that that does not happen. All right, take a look at this. We have to go over to Australia now. COVID hospitalizations up by 30% in one week in Victoria. Seven-day hospitalization figures have increased by approximately 30% in the past week. Wastewater measures are indicating that there are high levels of COVID-19 transmission in Victoria. So, yes, that is something that is a problem. And in one of the key messages here, this not just doesn't go for there. This goes for the entire world. It is important that we keep those over 65 safe. Yes, because as we know, they 
you know, older folks have a higher chance of hospitalization, death, more severe disease. But really, anyone who's immunocompromised at any age is at high risk. And anyone who's already had a COVID infection, well, we know there have been studies that show the more times you have COVID, the more ch your chances are of getting long COVID and a whole bunch of problems that could come with that. All right, moving on to this now. There have been four more dairy herds affected by H5N1 in the United States, 46 herds in nine states now confirmed with HPAI infections. So uh, this is not a good thing to see. And then moving on to this now, this is something I'm just going to only spend a moment on. Um, this is coming from Alexander Tin, and this is not good. There's going to be a big change coming this fall. I'm kind of really disappointed about this because not everybody has health care insurance in the United States, so uh, this is bad. Here's what happens. If you don't have health care insurance in the United States, it turns out you will not be getting a free COVID shot this fall. I know, totally ridiculous. You just saw. Let's go back to that opening graphic again. Here's the, the chart. Here's the opening thing we talked about. There have been 22,390 COVID deaths already in May. We still have several more months to go. But meanwhile, they think, uh, well, it's a good time now to end free shots for those who don't have insurance. I mean, come on now. That's not fair. I mean, not everyone can afford health care insurance. I mean, it can get very expensive. These shots, they should be free. Now, there's a reason why it's ending, and it's because of a funding issue. It's, you know, it's all about money. But again, I mean, they should not be, they, they should continue to be free, and they should not have to pay for those shots. Taking a look at the allergy map for today, pollen levels. 39% of the country is in a moderate stage or higher and I uh, take a look here we do have some reds that are showing up in portions of the Great Lakes and Midwest and most of the moderate is above or north of the southern US so like the Pacific Northwest the uh, northern plains even some parts of uh, Maine New Hampshire Boston area and Massachusetts there's actually some red showing up there you see a large area of green from Pennsylvania down into Virginia. That's because there's been a lot of clouds and precipitation today. Now let's take a look at the ever-changing air qualities in the United States. I mean, this is going to be a problem that we're going to be looking at. I mean, we look at air qualities every day, but it's, we're going to be seeing more colors on the map going forward. And we can see that here. In the plains again today, from Houston, Texas, straight on up through the Dakotas and into Minnesota. We do see oranges, we see yellows, and even across Michigan and Wisconsin, Chicago, you're in the yellows today, Toronto, Canada, Ottawa, I mean, this is north of the United States, up in the Canada, you're seeing problems today. The Gulf Coast is eh, 50s, it's starting to rise there. Los Angeles, looks like your air quality is a little elevated today, so it is a problem. And again, we have wildfires down in Mexico, we also have wildfires up in portions of Canada. So that is something we're going to have to continue to watch, which is relatively concerning. Something else we're going to have to continue to watch. I don't have it up here yet. It's coming back soon. I promise. Probably by next week, I'm going to be putting this in the updates. That is the heat-related heat related illness dashboard. If the United States is still running it, we're adding it back. Why? Well, check this out. Don't usually show weather models on here, but in this case, climate-related, we have to show this. Take a look in the south. You can see southern Texas on this is today. Take a look again tomorrow. You can see here. Look at Florida. Upper 90s are starting to show up. Then we go to Friday. Take a look at this. Upper 90s in southern Texas. And this is the GFS model, Global Forecasting System. It is showing, I'm going to zoom in on this. It is showing that in Florida, we have south near Miami, 100 degree weather that is going to cause heat related illnesses and this is not even including the heat index so yes it's beginning beginning to become that time of year again where we have to talk about heat related illnesses i know it's something we don't like but it's coming and it's only going to get worse as we get deeper into the summer or mind you we're not even in summer yet we're still at may 15th and already i'm telling you 100 degree weather and heat related illnesses are coming to florida maybe even portions of texas as well yeah get ready um if if you do not have to be outdoors in those areas stay inside in air conditioned cooled air especially if you have lung damage breathing difficulties asthma copd any of those things please limit your time outdoors
If you want to learn more about climate or just be up to date with the latest climate news, you can follow me on my other Twitter dash X page. It's now called X at Climate Data Report. That's Climate Data, capital R P T, or just X search Climate Data Report, and it will come right up. I do try to tweet some things out there daily. All right, taking a look at EMS calls in Philadelphia. I know that says Monday. That really is yesterday's number. That is the Tuesday number. They just put Monday for some reason. I don't know why. I guess they made a mistake. 801 EMS incidents reported for yesterday. And taking a look now at what is going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, not terribly busy, just eight calls right now. We do see nauseous, vomiting, fever, so that is ongoing. Uh, Chester County, a little bit busier than when I looked a few minutes ago. There were only about three or four calls a few minutes ago, and now I'm seeing there's about eight or nine calls. So yes, some calls to be had in Chester County, Pennsylvania, sick person, heart problems, stroke, injury. Respiratory difficulty, never a good thing to see any of those. All right, let's take a look at a few states on Walgreens. Well, the national positivity rate for COVID is 15.3%. The prior week was 14%. Difference of op, 1.4%, but testing's down, 3,565 versus 3,763. New York State this week did see a drop in testing, 22.5% positivity rate versus 20.7%. That's a difference of up 1.8%. Total test, 120 versus 150. So your positivity rate rose because of the fact that, hey, your testing was down. And we can also take a look at Rhode Island. I want to see what's going on in Rhode Island. Never a good thing to see Rhode Island red. Never a good thing to see a rise in Rhode Island because we know Rhode Island often has a hospital capacity issue. 26.1% positivity rate this week versus 11.8% last week. That's a difference of up 14.3% and the testing went up 23 versus 17. Yes, my friends, this is a legitimate rise, unfortunately. Let's take a look at what is going on in Colorado. Colorado is bright red, 24.1% positivity rate this week. The prior week was 19.2%. That is up by 4.8% total test, 79 versus 78. How about we look at Alaska? What is going on in Alaska? Well, Alaska this week is coming up blank. Look at that. We can't see anything for Alaska. But let's go up to the... Let's go back to the Great Lakes region, shall we? Let's see what's going on there in Illinois. 15.8% positivity rate this week. 21.9% last week. That is down 6.1%. Total test, 247 versus 274. And we will end today on Mississippi. Mississippi, 17.6% positivity rate this week. The prior week was 12.5%. That's a difference of up 5.1%. 17 tests versus 16. All right, moving on now. Let's take a look at a few wastewater sites, shall we? Let's go up into New England and see what's going on in Montpelier, Vermont. Been some time since we've taken a look at there. And take a look at this. COVID, back on April 22nd, it started to see an increase. And it is continuing to see an increase. So this is not like, oh, it's one week and done. No, we are now at May 15th. And as of May 9th, they were still rising for COVID. So if you're in the Montpelier, Vermont area, please be advised. COVID levels, they are rising for you at this time. We'll take a look at Burlington, Vermont, another day. Taking a look at what's going on with RSV, that's low. Influenza A is not rising at this time. Influenza B is not seeing a rise. HMPV is seeing a rise, as is norovirus at this time. And norovirus, wow, getting up to close to 100 thousand pathogens that definitely puts it in the high category no mpox and just one hepatitis a detection back on march 5th let's do another wastewater site shall we how about we come down to miami florida haven't looked at that in a while and let's go down to how about we go up to north miami that's let's see what's going on there ever so slight increase for COVID at this time nothing major not as big as the rise as we just saw up in montpelier vermont rsv is low at this time slight rise for influenza a which is something that we are seeing pop up at random in uh, many different places across the united states it's something that we really need to keep an eye on because influenza a and wastewater should not be rising at this time of year influenza b no detections of that i mean yeah, it's well, just a couple detections. It was down to zero. Now there's just a couple. It's very low at this time. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus, it's rising a little bit. And I would definitely say it's moderate, if not high at this time. Mpox, 
no detections of that, and there are some detections of hepatitis A. Let's do one more wastewater site on the west, and we have to get to some of our daily data. And let's come out here to, why don't we come down here to Los Angeles, and we'll go down here, no, better yet, we have not done San Diego in a while. Can we do San Diego? Yes, we can. We can take a look at San Diego. And San Diego at this time is flat for COVID, flat for RSV. Influenza A, just an ever so slight rise, nothing major. Influenza B, no issues with that. HMPV, no issues, no issues with nor norovirus is low. It's same medium, but that's actually low at this time. Mpox, no issues, and just a few detections of hepatitis A. All right, now let's move on to the latest variants of COVID. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, we have now moved on to the KP.2 variant, which makes up 28.2% of the people testing positive in the United States, or at least from the small sample sizes that they do. Remember, not all cases of COVID. Like, for example, if you test positive on a rapid test at home, well, guess what? We're not able to know which variant you had because it hasn't been sequenced. It hasn't been sampled. They haven't checked to see what variant it is. And not all PCR tests get checked either. Just a very small fraction do. JN.1 was the variant that caused the winter wave. That's at 15.7%. Uh, that actually dropped on the most recent update. Alright, taking a look at New Jersey. 69 out of 70 hospitals reported, and that totals out to 166 hospitalizations, 6 people on a ventilator, 20 people in the ICU, and at this time, 15 discharges. New York State, 379 new COVID cases reported, not including those at home test. All right, New York State hospitalizations. They went up a little bit today. They are at 455 in the hospital and 43 people in the ICU. That is higher than yesterday's 444 number, and the ICU number is slightly higher as well. Let's take a look at what is going on in Long Island. Let's see if there is a rise in Long Island at this time. I'm going to zoom this back in. It always refreshes when we click on it and take a look at that. They had 62 hospitalizations yesterday, today 65, so that did go up slightly. How about New York City? What's going on there? And New York City actually dropped a little bit today. The capital region, how about there? And the capital region looks like it was just about flat over yesterday, and they have no people in the ICU in the capital region at this time. All right, finally today, Colorado. 73 people are in the hospital at this time. That's down by five. And it looks like here the positivity rate dropped a little bit too, to 3.6%. Uh, Cases reported this week, 580. That is saying that it is down by 78, if that is up to date. We do know the hospitalization number is up to date with, again, 73 people in the hospital. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update. We will have another edition of the Pandemic Update again tomorrow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. The more you hit that like button down below, the more YouTube pushes this out throughout the algorithm, and the more people we help keep safe. If you're new to the channel, and you liked what you see here, and you want to see more of this, subscribe down below, share this with anyone you know, and of course, if you have anything to say on anything you saw today, or something that's on your mind that maybe you want to bring to my attention, or just say, post it down in the comments section down below. I will see you guys all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone, and have a fantastic Wednesday evening. Thanks for watching.